Online platforms are being investigated and reviewed after the weekend's back-to-back -back mass shootings in Texas and Ohio. US President Donald Trump has called for better regulation of social media after it was reported one of the shooters posted a hate-filled rant before carrying out the massacre. We must recognize that the internet has provided a dangerous avenue to radicalize, disturb minds, and perform demented acts. We must shine light on the dark recesses of the internet and stop mass murders before they start. So what needs to change and what will actually make a difference? Here with Maura's advisor and researcher on digital family lifestyle, Dr Joanne Orlando. Welcome back, Joe. Thank you. Thanks Hi. for coming in today. Now, the shooter allegedly posted on a site which is an online community with very few restrictions. Um, it allows people to post anonymously. How dangerous uh, are sites like this and, and that the fact they're unregulated? Yeah, so it's not the only site of this kind. There's lots of them. Who knows how many there are? And they're under the banner of free speech. So you can say whatever you want and you can say it anonymously. So what it draws to that site are people who don't have mainstream ideas, who have more extreme ideas and it's a place for them to start airing those ideas. So this site has got a lot of white supremacy kind of ideas, extreme ideas about gender, children, mm. different religions. And because it's anonymous, they really just go to town and say whatever they want. And because they're in a community of like-minded people, they get a lot of support. And I think it gives confidence to maybe take that next action because they're getting a lot of agreement yeah. from that kind of environment. And it's kind of a false sense of security in yeah. a way. Yeah, culpability really is a major issue around this at the moment, isn't it? Under, under current uh, US law, social media users, not the platforms, uh, are liable for content that's posted online. Now, we, we heard from Donald Trump there before calling for a bit of a crackdown. So what's he suggesting that should change, perhaps at in the beginning with the US, perhaps even on a more global scale? Yeah, we're seeing lots of changes and shakedowns in social media. So Donald Trump is blaming a few things. He's saying white supremacy and mental health issues, fake news um, and, and the violent video games. So he's saying, all right, with these mass shootings now, the people who are doing it are liable and he's calling for the death penalty mm. for what he calls domestic terrorism mm. and mass shootings and he's looking to the Department of Justice to draw up legislation very quickly because he wants to get it into place very quickly. So he's looking to the individual and the blame on the individual. Yeah, and that's it. even been a discussion closer to home recently yeah. with their own Prime Minister and New Zealand's Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern as well, hasn't it? That's right, and it, it makes sense. So they're using the social media platform to amplify their message and using it to get the word out or maybe using it to get information, but it does come down to the individual. They're using social media as a tool, but it's still their decision. Yeah. I mean, this obviously, this website in particular that was used was a, a small sort of back yeah. chat room, but this applies to big companies, Facebook, yeah. uh, Twitter. Uh, they all obviously came under the spotlight following the Christchurch massacre. What has actually changed, though, since that event? Have they done anything proactive to really stamp this out? Yeah, they have. So it's been good. So Facebook and uh, YouTube, for example, they take down any... Uh, hate speech, so violent, any kind of hate speech, and they actively take it down. And, and in my own daily use of social media, I see things that they're taking down. So they're being very proactive, and that's, of course, we need that as well. But we also need the government to step in and look at it from a, a government level because we can't just look at commercial companies looking after us. Mm. We need the government to look after us as well. Yeah, and, and these issues are really amplified, aren't they, when material is shared? I mean, it's just one click. Mm. It's so fast. Sometimes people have a split second to sometimes think about it. So is there any way to, to stop this cyber cycle, do you think? Yeah, there is. We get shocked by the footage we see and our automatic reaction is, oh, I have to show my husband. I have to show someone. So mm. we're seeing this kind of footage come through or this kind of content come through and I think the idea of ethical sharing is a good idea you know what are the implications if you share this kind of content for the person you share it with but more extensively and also these mass shootings are done on a public scale mm. the shooter wants everyone to see it so if you're sharing it you're playing into their hands yes. and you're doing exactly what you want them to do so I think we don't want that no one would want to support 
these kinds of actions. Mm. At the root of this, though, obviously shootings have happened before the internet. Um, and there is a bigger social issue at hand here, and it extends beyond Trump. This is yeah. something that's been going on a long time, particularly in America. What can we do to address that issue? Yeah, I think we often tend to blame the internet or technology. That's the problem. But really what it's about is about prejudices. So it's focusing on, you know, we live in diverse communities now, so focusing on more acceptance, understanding of other cultures. And I think that culture is just one aspect of people. There are many aspects to who we are mm -hmm. uh, and focusing on, on more tolerance in that way. Yeah, it's certainly a space worth scrutinising. And we thank you for your insight today, Joe. Good yeah, to see you. Yeah, thanks. Thanks very much. All right, coming up. So